Hi guys, this is Hero, and today I'm gonna be going over the Upache houses, okay? So as you guys may or may not know, if you guys are somewhat interested in Vedic astrology, is that Upache houses are three, six, 10, and 11, okay? But there's a reason why it's these four, okay? They didn't just pick four houses at random, the ancient, you know, rishis and sages and say, hey, these are the Upache houses. Um, there's a reason they didn't pick, you know, three houses, they didn't pick five, they didn't pick six, they didn't pick two, they picked specifically four and they picked, excuse me, specifically these four, okay? They didn't pick the 12th house, they didn't pick the 8th house, they didn't pick the 7th house, they picked specifically 3, 6, 10, and 11. Now, I'm going to go over this in terms, I'm going to kind of connect the houses to the signs, okay? So the first all the way to the 12th sign, I'm going to connect them from the first all the way to the 12th uh, sign, okay? The, the, all 12 houses to all 12 signs. So the first house is Aries, second house has a connection to Taurus, all the way around to where the 11th house has a connection to Aquarius and the 12th house has a connection to Pisces, okay? So if you look at 3, 6, 10, and 11 in terms of signs, what pops out at you? Three and six are owned by Mercury and 10 and 11 are owned by Saturn, okay? That's the first reason why these four are Upacha houses, okay? And I'm gonna tell you why that's important in a second. Two, out of these four signs, you might just look at them and be like, oh, it's four out of 12. Well, if you look at all the earth and the air signs, it's four out of six, okay? So there's zero water and zero fire signs here, okay? So it's two out of the three earth signs and two out of the three air signs. Three, the point number three I'm trying to try to make is that the only other earth and um, fire sign missing, if you look at the houses in terms of signs, is two and seven, Taurus and Libra, which are both ruled by Venus, which both has to do with your wants, not your needs, okay? So Upacha houses have to do with the free will that you need to do in this lifetime, okay? The second and the seventh has to do with the free will that you want to execute in this lifetime. And all the other houses have less of that free, they, they might have to do with wants or they might have to do with needs, but they have more to do with, um, they have relatively more destiny involved rather than free will, okay? And why? Earth and fire signs, I mean, I mean, sorry, earth and uh, water signs, excuse me, have less of a free will element um, uh, attached to them. And why is that? If you look at the cycle, uh, fire represents creating a new cycle. Earth represents stabilizing, you know, whatever came into your life. Air represents expanding that. And water kind of represents letting that go. So as you can imagine, when it's water, for example, when it's time for you to let something go, most likely, even if you try to use your free will to attach to it, it's not going to end well for you. Okay, so there's now there is some free will obviously attached to the water signs or the houses connected to the water signs like 4, 8, and 12, but it's less. Same thing with the fire sign. Whatever is meant to come in your life is meant to come in your life, okay? Um, obviously, there's some free will that you can have attached to that, and most of that, it's not actually what comes in your life. It's more how you are able to stabilize it and how you're able to expand on it, okay? But when, when it comes to fire signs, there's less um, free will involved in destiny. For example, if you look at the, um, you know, first house itself, you know, you didn't choose your body. Like, like not, not, not from a free will as far as, you know, a mind standpoint, right? Obviously, our soul chose the challenges and, um, you know, desires that it wanted to fulfill in this life based off of our karma and stuff like that. But, um, but, but there's less free will attached, okay? Same thing with the Upachya houses or any earth and air signs, uh, for example. They have more to do with free will, but there is a little bit of destiny involved in them as well. It's just more free will involved, okay? And the houses or the, the signs connected to the houses ruled by Venus has less to do with what you need to do. Th those are more just wants, okay? So I'm gonna get into why the three, six, 10, and 11 now are are houses that have to do with the free will that you need to do in this life, okay? So Saturn, for example. Saturn rules the signs connected to the 10th and the 11th house. 10th and the 11th house has to do with establishing discipline, establishing some kind of routine, and and that usually has to do with kind of um, helping others, right? If you kind of connect that Capricorn to Aquarius, okay? So it has to do with kind of the changes you're gonna make in your life 
the discipline you're going to establish and what you're going to do for others as far as you know your your karma that you're fulfilling okay Th this is not something you have a choice in okay so if, if you have ever run a saturn mahadasha antardasha or have had any important transit related to saturn you will notice that if you're trying to do what it's not wanting you to do or what your karma is not saying for you to do it's not going to end very well for you okay it's going to punish you it's going to try to have all kinds of frustration um in order to get you to do what it wants you to do or what it needs you to do but it it has to be you that does it it's not just going to happen on its own so you need to do your free will you need to do certain free wills in order to fulfill your karma in this life okay same thing with mercury three and six okay six kind of has to do with analyzing your wants versus needs okay you if, if you don't um when it comes to Virgo, okay, and sixth house also has to do with frustrations, okay. If you're and Mercury has to do with, um, you know, your, your rational intelligence, okay. So if you're using your intelligence for the wrong things, it's not going to end well. You, you're you're meant to use your intelligence for a very certain purpose, okay. You're not trying to use it for any wrong things. Same thing with the third house. It has to do with your self efforts. Your self effort. This is why Mercury rules the third in the sixth house, okay. Your 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 self efforts, you know, also connected with your wants and needs, um, your self efforts, you, you want to be putting the efforts in the right places. Okay. Your efforts are your efforts. They're not uh, the things that you do in your life related to the third house. It's stuff that you do. However, if, um, there's certain karma related to the third house that you're probably going to need to fulfill. Okay. And if you don't, uh, it's also not going to end up very well for you. Okay. As you can tell the sixth house has, uh, if you don't analyze your wants and needs, um, and you put those your efforts in the wrong in the wrong places it's going to lead to a lot of frustrations which is what the sixth house represents okay and i'll kind of just give you a couple examples of why the other houses aren't upacha houses okay so the second and the seventh as i said they're the other earth and air signs but it has to do with venus it has to do with wants okay second house um you don't need to eat any fancy foods or drive any fancy cars okay these are just wants okay so yeah it's free will as far as you know the food you most of the foods you eat nice foods you eat according to your karma cars you drive even the seventh house you know the the desires pertaining to the people you're forming a relationship with uh to an extent um yeah it's all your free will but it's not free will you necessarily need to do it's free will you want to do okay some of the other houses they're either um they're they're not they're either desires they're not um but like it's not really things that need to happen and it's stuff that or it's stuff that's not connected to um your free will itself right i'll give you an example so the 12th house um has to do with letting go okay uh most likely you're not going to use any free will to let go if, you, if you're meant to let go of something it's going to be let go okay same thing with the eighth house when it comes to intuition and sudden ups and downs most likely these, these ups and downs are just going to occur okay same thing with the fourth house your fourth house has a lot to do with your emotions cancer moon think cancer think moon um you can't control your emotions okay uh the home you're born in you're raised in most likely you can't control that either fifth house has a lot to do with sun leo um identity the thoughts you have the related to the related to sun and uh leo um the thoughts you have you also can't control them okay you kind of just want to observe them uh okay but you can't control your thoughts you can't control your emotions with our fourth house you can't control your sudden ups and downs of the eighth house you or you're like kind of like the intuition you gain you can't control um you know the twelfth house which is uh your losses you can't control um as much your first house which is kind of the body you receive um stuff like that and um also the ninth house to an extent um you, you can put efforts into gaining higher knowledge and stuff like that but you can't control really you know the guru who uh comes in your life um and stuff like that there's for example if you were to try to learn some kind of um spiritual or like um like 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 religious uh you know if you want a guru or guide most likely uh that's a very karmic thing it's just gonna kind of come when your karma allows it okay and your free will your but your houses are connected to the other houses as well okay it's not like your free will is only going to connect those right um each house has a certain relationship to each other okay but when it comes to the direct results of the three six ten and eleven they have a lot to do with your free will and they also have a lot to do with karma that you need to fulfill based off of that free will kind of um 
the, the, the free will that the, ad, the added free will that you have pertaining to those houses versus the other houses, which is more relatively destiny related rather than um, free will itself. OK, um, so I think I covered everything as far as how the other earth and air sign uh, has to do with your want rather than your needs pertaining to free will and how all the fire and the air signs have more to do with um, a destiny, uh, um, have more destiny connected to them relatively than free will compared to the earth and fire sign. I mean, the um, the earth and the air signs, particularly the Upachi houses, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know. And until next time, talk to you guys later. Thank you.